Glass is a material we find all around us in the modern world. Its clear transparency has made it an incredibly useful tool by allowing us to see in and out of various objects. It even allows us to modify our vision to correct and improve our sight, or to extend our vision to see incredibly tiny or distant objects. But what if you couldn't just buy glass? What if the infrastructure that exists to allow you to buy it from a store disappeared one day? How hard would it be to collect the resources from nature and make your own glass? The answer I found is that uh, it's actually pretty hard. I've tried three separate times now, each time adjusting my methods and ingredients, but still making actual transparent glass has remained out of my reach. But I'm not yet ready to admit defeat. Ultimately, there are three things holding me back from success. My lack of access to additional minerals, my own lack of knowledge on some of the chemistry required, and my lack of proper equipment to reach high enough temperatures. So I reached out to two other YouTubers who I saw were also experimenting with glass making and realized between what each of us brought to the table, we might just be able to make this happen. But to get to them and collect all the additional ingredients I'll need, I'm going to have to hit the road and head west to collect minerals for the glass from four different states. Before I leave home in Minnesota, I want to make sure I bring some of the sand I collected from the Mississippi River with me. The quartz sand in this area, combined with the hydroelectric power of the river, once made this area a key location for producing glass for windshields of thousands of cars that were once produced here in the early 20th century. My previous attempts at glass proved the quality of the sand, although there are trace iron impurities, which has caused some of bluish green discoloration. But I'll be receiving some help from Cody to try and remove that later. The next key ingredient for glass making is the flux. This is an ingredient that lowers the melting point of glass and makes it much easier to work with. While glass can be made without it, it often requires intense heat of lightning, volcano, or nuclear bombs, and usually it doesn't turn out that clear. In my previous attempt, I was forced to use a locally available mineral called potash. Extracted from hardwood ashes, this mineral proved to be a pain to collect, requiring the processing of tons of ashes. However, most glass today uses a different material for the flux, soda ash. However, it's not available anywhere in Minnesota, so my next stop is going to have to be Wyoming, near an old historic landmark. If you followed along the old Oregon Trail, you would come across a large round monolith that was named Independence Rock. For settlers making it out west, this rock marked the location you wanted to arrive by July 4th, Independence Day. If you were to arrive later than that, it's likely you wouldn't be able to make it through the mountains before the winter snow came and blocked all the mountain passes. Carved all along the rock are the names of some of these travelers. But my interest isn't in the rock, but a nearby lake which contains a compound called Natron. It's been used in glass making since ancient Roman times. I'm here in Natrona County, Wyoming to collect what is the namesake of this county, Natron. In this lake is a high deposit of a variety of chemicals that make up Natron. The chief one being soda ash, which can be used for glass making and soap. So I'm going to collect some of the brine, boil it down, and hopefully Cody will be able to help me separate the chemicals so we can get some really good glass. Oh, it is disgusting here. There's like swarms of flies over there. It just smells disgusting. I'm not sure where it is. I don't know if it's actual chemicals. I mean, the water looks disgusting. It's super cloudy. It's probably the high concentration of the chemicals, but there might be other stuff in here too. Hopefully not. I'm trying to get pure stuff. With the natron collected, I strain out all the bug larvae and other particles and then boil it down to just the salts. With the aftermath of that, I might be banned from a few hotels. Then it's on to the next stop of our trip, Arizona. One suggestion Cody gave me was that I needed to add fining agents that will help reduce and remove the air bubbles that have plagued my past attempts. Many of these compounds were too difficult to source from nature, but one option I could get was gypsum. Gypsum is a compound that's often used in drywall, but also can be added to glass to help remove air bubbles. It's hard. Right next to the Utah border in Arizona, I was able to access an old gypsum mine and collect some raw crystals myself.
with that collection of minerals, it was off to one more stop at the fourth state to visit Cody in Utah. There with him, he'll help me with the last couple ingredients and also help me purify all the other minerals. But first, while in Utah, I collected a bunch of other ingredients I can use in future projects, including gold, silver, obsidian, several other minerals, and also stopped to blow some stuff up. But now, on to Cody. One of the last crucial ingredients I need for my glass is lime. Adding a small amount of this calcium carbonate compound prevents the glass from degrading when exposed to moisture. In my previous attempts, I tried crushed limestone and even eggshells, but both had other impurities that ended up discoloring the glass. Cody helped me find a much more pure source of straight calcium carbonate, a mineral called calcite. First up for purifying my ingredients, removing the iron from my sand. It looks like most of the lithic fragments in here are actually sandstone, so... You know, a lot of the darker bits are pitch blend though, basically dirt forming minerals. It looks like a pretty good sand really, Yeah. nice and fine. Looks like there's some bits of carbonate. I don't think I'll be able to take out these uh, lithic fragments. Mm -hmm. One thing I can take out is the heavy iron materials. Uh, magnetite's pretty easy to get out with a magnet, mm -hmm. but hematite is not really all that magnetic. Oh really? So it's kind of harder to remove. But doing this, it's heavy, so it'll sink to the bottom. You guys gold pan before, right? Yeah, just a few days ago. Look at that. Here's your black sand. It's not a lot we took out, but that would really help. Next, we need to separate the soda ash from the rest of the impurities in the natron. According to a 50-year-old geological study, 35% sodium sulfate, mm -hmm. and then the rest of it is mostly soda ash. Which it tastes is... like soda ash, so I believe it. How much uh, brine did you have? 10 gallons. That must have been concentrated. The major contaminant you said is uh, sodium sulfate? Yep. Okay. So I do have a few ways we can remove that. Cody showed me how he roasted his calcite to form calcium oxide, which when then added to water forms a strong base of calcium hydroxide. The calcium hydroxide will react with the sodium sulfate, forming calcium sulfate, which is even less soluble than the calcium hydroxide. Calcium sulfate will settle down along with most of the uh, calcium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. And what we'll end up with is uh, sodium carbonate mixed with the sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, probably as you're boiling it down, will react with carbon in the air, forming more sodium carbonate. Mm -hmm. So it's one way to get rid of that contaminant. Yeah, you got to boil that down again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lastly, Cody produced another finding agent to add to the mix, nitric acid, which acts like a bleach and removes any extra color and contaminants that might have been left in my other ingredients. For more details on how Cody produced his nitric acid, roasted the lime, and further explanations of everything he did, be sure to check out the video on his channel. Thanks to Cody, all the ingredients should now be ready for the glass making and final collaboration with our last stop with Grant Thompson, King of Random. Grant's produced a surprisingly inexpensive forge that seems to produce temperatures much higher than the makeshift kiln I tried to use before. And his looks really promising for helping us produce some clear glass. You can check out the combined attempt of all three of us attempting to finally make clear glass on Grant's channel. You definitely should check it out, and I don't want to spoil it, but from what I learned doing this, you can definitely look forward to a renewed attempt at the telescope from scratch in the future. Thanks again to Cody's Lab and the King of Random. Be sure to check out their videos, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to their channels. They both put out some really awesome content.